Hello. Hello and welcome. I'm Tim from Experimental RC and today in this video we're going to be doing some airflow visualization of some different KF airfoils. So we have a KF2, 3, and 4 and we're going to be comparing them to a regular airfoil and also an unprofiled wing. So stay tuned and enjoy. So airflow visualization with KF airfoils is something that I've been wanting to do for a while now, but I just haven't been able to come up with a way to make a continuous supply of heavy, uh, thick smoke to actually see what the air is doing. That is, until now, in this hand, I have a bottle half full with hot water. In this cooler, I have a little something that I like to call dry ah! So in this cooler, I have a little something that I like to call dry ice. A few chunks of these. Look at that. Knock me down and call me Susan because that is airflow visualization. Anyways, I'm doing the tests in my homemade wind tunnel which uses a brushless motor to move the air and stacked corrugated plastic sheets to remove turbulence from the air before it enters the viewing chamber. The first test I did was with the unprofiled wing. You can see that the wing experiences airflow separation at a fairly low angle of attack. Airflow separation is the generic term given to the occurrence where the boundary layer or the layer of air closest to the surface of the wing has a velocity of close to zero. This is visible in the form of turbulence and eddies as you can see here. This represents the wing at stall. You can also see the oscillating trailing vortices characteristic of a wing at stall here and here. When we look closely, we can see a small trailing vortex present even when the wing is at a low angle of attack. Moving on to the regular airfoil, you can see that the airflow separation doesn't occur until an angle of attack slightly larger than that of the unprofiled wing is reached. Next up is our first stepped airfoil, the KFM2, which is a utility airfoil very popular on scratch-built planes. This airfoil is known to have a higher stall resistance than a conventional airfoil. Some speculations on the mechanisms behind this airfoil suggest that a small trapped vortex forms behind this step which somehow increases the lift being generated. As we can see in this test, however, the area behind the step forms a pocket of air, which appears to be stationary with no vortex present. When the airfoil stalls and airflow separation occurs, the pocket quickly disintegrates. At lower angles of attack, we can see a significant amount of turbulence being created in the wake, far more than observed with the regular airfoil. The KFM3, or heavy lifter, is similar to the previous airfoil, however it has one additional step. Aircraft with this type of airfoil are known to fly better with a center of gravity further back than normal. We can see right away that this aircraft creates a large amount of turbulence in its wake, even at a very small angle of attack. It also seems to have a pocket of air similar to the previous uh, airfoil that we tested, although this pocket of air actually seems to extend behind the airfoil, almost increasing the length of the airfoil, which is very interesting and could possibly explain why this type of wing both creates more lift and has a further back center of gravity. There is one other interesting observation I made. Watch the air pocket behind this step in this quick clip. A small amount of smoke has become trapped in this pocket and it lingers around for a few seconds even after I remove the main smoke source. 
This suggests that there is very little air exchange between the pocket and the surrounding airflow. The final test is with a KFM4 airfoil which is symmetrical and known to be good for fast aerobatic flying. It is difficult to observe the pockets of air in this test, however they do exist. Additionally, there is very little turbulence in the wake of this wing and it seems very stall resistant. Observe how the airstream is deflected when the wing is at a very large angle of attack. Hey everyone, thanks again for watching this video. I sincerely hope you enjoyed it because over the last half hour I've inhaled enough carbon dioxide to kill a small animal. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and check back soon because I'll have more videos coming out right away. Ooh.